Oh. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special edition, Thanksgiving edition of Cooking Without Looking. I'm Annette Watkins, and we have a special day for you planned. Unfortunately, Alan Preston could not be with us today because he's in a play. Can you believe that? I do, because he's so talented. He can not only sing, but he can act. But he promised me that we would be, he would be with us in spirit. So speaking of spirit, I think that Thanksgiving is one of the most spiritual holidays there is. In fact, there's so many other countries around the world that celebrate some sort of Thanksgiving celebration. One has, a, let me see if I can remember, it's Libya, St. Lucia, Grenada, Canada, Germany, Japan. Wow, that's just to name a few. And it kind of all began as a day of giving thanks for the previous year, the blessing of the harvest from the previous year. So that's quite special. Speaking of special, today's show is very special. We have three special chefs with some amazing recipes for you that you can share with your family and friends during this holiday season, not just Thanksgiving, but all the way through Christmas. First of all, we have with us Dave Carriger. Carriger, Carriger I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Dave. Uh, Dave is going to prepare his very popular chicken wings. So we're excited about that. Secondly, we have um, Leah Perrine. And Leah's going to make a, never heard of this before, but a pumpkin pumpkin pie. And she said no cans allowed. So therefore, she's making it with fresh pumpkin. Way to go, Leah. And third, we have Rose. Rose is going to make her special no-bake dessert balls. So we want to get started, but just as a reminder, I want everybody to know that all of us associated with the show, like myself and Alan, and all our guests and chefs, they all have a visual impairment or they're either blind. I myself have a form of macular degeneration, which is called stardust, which means I, like macular, I do not have central I have central vision loss. So let me show you what I did. It's kind of, I don't know, it might be helpful for someone out there. I took this chip that we're using today and I went to FedEx and I asked them if they could blow it up to a 36 font. I know that is big, but it allows me to read it most of the time without glasses, as long as the lighting is good and, and I'm feeling good that day. Sometimes my eyes are worse one day to another. But the other thing I did is visually important this box look at this box I love this box I put my script on top of it so it raises it up closer to my face so I could see it so I just wanted to share with that that with you and we are going to get started in our show also I want to let you guys know in the virtual audience please please write down your questions for our chef today so you can ask them questions at the end of the event. Okay, so we're going to get started. Yay! We're going to get started with our first guest, who's Dave Carriger. Dave's all the way from Canada. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm great, and thank you for having me on the show today. Oh, it's great to have you. I, I lost my video for a moment here. I don't know what happened, but oh. let me... I could get that back. Oh, it's not coming up. So I can hear you, but I can't see anything. So I apologize for that. So I have to make sure I listen carefully. Okay, so I was reading a little bit about your bio. Very impressive to me that you're training for a 10K. Yeah, sure. I you also, you've also mm -hmm. surfed in Hawaii. Is that true? Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dave. Yeah, so those things are both true. Uh, so just give a little bit of background about my vision loss is uh, I have retinitis pigmentosa. Um, I lost, started losing my vision when I was about uh, 10 or 11 years old. Um, for those that aren't aware of retinitis pigmentosa, I, I lose my uh, central and part of my peripheral vision uh, slowly over a period of time. Um, so I, I've always been uh, very, you know, interested in, you know, healthy eating and cooking and, uh, and sports, as you mentioned, uh, through my through my whole entire life. 
Um, recently, um, I finished a, a 10K uh, race in Halifax, Nova Scotia, which is a uh, province here on the east coast of Canada. Um, and yes, as you mentioned, back in 2016 on a, on a trip to Hawaii, I uh, got to take an accessible surfing lesson in, in the ocean, which was unreal. Um, I graduated uh, university from the University of Prince Edward Island in 2012 with a foods and nutrition uh, minor. Uh, so food and healthy eating has been a, a big part of my life. Um, I've recently started a small cooking business here in PEI, um, also where I bake and sell uh, baked goods like cookies and squares and things like that at local markets. And I also teach uh, some virtual cooking lessons online as well. Dave, oh my goodness, that's quite a list of accomplishments and things that you're still ongoing to do. Um, very, very impressive that you have um, knowledge, so much knowledge in nutrition and that you're into fitness. And you went from Canada to Hawaii. Was it hard to come back to Canada after being in Hawaii or do you, do you like both weather from both places? Um, yeah, I like both, both, both. climates. Uh, the time of year we went was coming back was easy because it was in the spring. So, okay, well that's fantastic. So we're so excited. We know this is your first time doing a cooking demo, I believe, on Zoom with us. But we're real excited because we know that you're like a specialist in this food that you're making. You're making chicken wings in the air fryer. So why don't you go ahead and tell us how you prepare those chicken wings? Um, sure. Um, so I have uh, some on the on the uh, stove top here. I have three bowls, um, and I have a a plastic container of chicken wings. Uh, these are unbreaded chicken wings because uh, we're going to make the breading ourselves. Just open that the sounds tight. good. You're not just going to use breadcrumbs. You're going to make homemade breading. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to use breadcrumbs, a combination of flour, breadcrumbs, and milk to uh, okay. get the breading to stick. Right. Um, yeah, well, you can make your own breadcrumbs if you want to. If you have a food processor or a, like a high power blender, you can just toast some bread and then uh, throw it in there, in there and grind it up to make breadcrumbs. Absolutely. So I like to uh, start out by putting the, the wings, you can put a few at a time if you want, into the flour. Then you like to make sure you get a good coating on, on the wings. I'm gonna do probably five or six here. Walk us through the steps. I know most people know this, but walk us through you first put it in the milk and then you go, you know, a couple more steps after that. Yeah, so I like to start by putting it in the flour and then next you put them into the milk. Okay. This this will help get them nice and moist or wet and make the breadcrumbs stick. So then the third step is into the actual breadcrumbs. I have a fork, fork in the breadcrumbs because they will kind of cake together. So if you're making a big batch, uh, it's nice to kind of stir them, stir them around after a while because they will kind of cake together from the wet wetness you're putting into them. And then I have a, a cookie sheet uh, lined with parchment paper um, off to the right of my stove here so I can do a big batch at once. And why do you use the parchment paper? Tell us the um, I just use the parchment paper to keep keep it clean, really. At the end of the breading process, you can just roll the parchment paper up and throw it in the trash for the garbage, and then your cookie sheet is good and clean. Also, your rock isn't touching the actual pan, so you can kind of use it so That makes the cleanup so easy, right? Especially if you're visually impaired. Yeah, it keeps it all in one place, and that way you... Uh, just roll it all up and throw it out at the end. Yay, I like that. So I like to toss, toss the wings and kind of roll them around. 
make sure you can get a good coating on them. Um, you'll be able to feel. Sometimes you have to kind of dump it back in the milk. Um, just to kind of make it make the crumb stick better if you don't get a good coating on it the first time. Right. Have you ever tried anything else besides like regular milk? Have you ever tried almond milk or cashew milk or can yes. you use any kind of milk? Uh, yeah, I've used almond milk before. And like earlier I used wings, but, or not wings, sorry, I used uh, eggs. Um, just like just like beaten eggs, but I found you didn't get a whole lot um, like of wings out of them. Like it, it used, exactly. the, it used yeah. the egg a lot faster than the milk. Right. Uh, so I went back to the milk here. Yeah, I like the way you said you did the flour, then the milk, then the breadcrumbs. Yeah. And I, I forgot to mention, I put some uh, seasoning in the flour. I put salt and pepper, um, onion powder, and garlic powder in the, oh, okay. in the flour. Yeah, and then the milk cool. and breadcrumbs is just plain. Not, I didn't add anything to that. Right. Okay, right, so, so I've, done about, uh, I've done about five or six here. Okay. So I'm going to push these things out of the way. And then I can demonstrate um, loading things into the air fryer. Another, another good thing is you want to keep uh, one hand for your wet, for your dry ingredients and one hand for your wet ingredients, because you, if not, uh, then you'll get like wet breadcrumbs all over both your hands. Oh no. All right. Good tip. Very good tip. Anything to keep the kitchen and yourself cleaner and makes things quicker and easier. So this is my, uh, this is the Kasori Smart Air Fryer. I recommend you get the bigger one because you can do a lot of wings at once or a lot of something at once. How many quarts is your air fryer? Um, I believe this is the 5.8 quart air fryer. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the one I have too. I w I still wish the base was even bigger because sometimes when you're making like French fries, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of room. But you can yeah. kind of squish them in there, right? You kind of put them close together. Yeah, I'm just putting these in in a single layer on the on the uh, air fryer basket. Okay. Um, today I have some kind of going against my own. Kind of rules, but I normally put the like the flat parts and the drumette parts in separately with each other, like the drumettes with the drumettes and the wing and the flats with the flats. Right. Um, oh, but today we have today we have a little bit of both. Um, so this doesn't get hot, so you can touch the sides. So don't worry about that. Okay. And then, uh, like I said, this is the smart version. So you can uh, set it all up through your phone or your iPad. Oh, wow. That's interesting. And what do you just, set the time uh, and the temperature or what? Uh, yeah, you can set the time and the temperature through your phone. Love it. Um, I had a preset. Um, so all I had to do was press start for the camera. Um, but yeah, and you can also run it through your smart devices as well, like your Alexa or your Google Home. Right. Um, whatever you have. Um, because I only put in like five or six, it's only going to take about, I don't know, between 11 and 12 minutes. Just 12 minutes. Okay. I was going to say, the techie is in the house today. That's the first time we've heard about using your phone or your Alexa or your Google to set your air fryer. How convenient is that if you're into that technology? If not, you just press a couple buttons. Yeah, this is a touch screen. Uh, I just had to go back because I realized I left a couple of wings on the pan. Oh, no. So I'm going to push this back in here. It There's automatically so pauses for you, so that's great, too. They're very lonely. 
yeah, that was one of the uh, major selling features for me for this version. Um, is the fact that it was it was very accessible compared to uh, some of the other versions that are out on the market. I see. And how long did you say they're going to cook, and what temperature is it? Uh, these are going to cook at 380 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 minutes. That's it? Yeah, this is only like a half a basket. Um, when I put the full basket in, it took 18 minutes. Okay, because you got to be careful with that chicken and make sure it's cooked right. <laughs> exactly. But due to the uh, convenience of TV, I have some already prepped here in the oven. Oh, good. Magic of TV, you said it right. <laughs> yeah, the magic of TV. And I just like to set, if you're, if you're doing a big batch, I do like to set the oven at like 200 or something like that, just to keep them, keep them warm. Sucks still. So you don't want them to stick your pan. These right. suck a bit. They did I'm stick. Grab a plate here. Yeah, just play them on a dish and we'll hold them up to the audience so everybody can see. And I made, a, I made a lemon uh, dill dip to go along with them as well. Wow, lemon dill dip. Love that. Sounds delicious. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a twist on your standard uh, ranch. Yeah, it's a little bit dressing. Yeah. I could tell you like being in the kitchen. Oh yeah, I, I love playing in the kitchen. It's my uh, happy place for sure. <laughs> tell us a little bit about, again, what you do. You said you brought food to stores. You're selling something. I didn't hear quite. I wanted you to repeat oh, yeah, that. Sorry. I have a small food-based business. We're called Blind Man Cooking. And I bake and, and sell uh, my cookies and other baked goods at local markets. Mm -hmm. um, or I also do orders through social media as well. As awesome. a what kind of cookies are they? Um, I do chocolate chip, oatmeal, raisin, and sugar cookies right now. And I'm also always looking to try new recipes to add to the repertoire. Wow. Okay. Well, if you ever need taste testers, I'm at blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll give you a call for sure. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> Just send them our way. So, what? Oh. Dave, are they all on the plate? I can't see real clear on this, but if if they're all on the yeah, plate, this version of the of the of the uh, chicken wings, I have mostly the uh, drumettes on this plate. Okay. Hold them up to the camera a little bit. Just hold the plate up and tilt it. Like this. That's good. Yeah, Dave, I could see them now. They look kind of golden. Yeah. Um, they they get real really nice. The thing I like about doing them in the air fryer is they get really nice and crispy. Yes. And you don't have to worry about dealing with a big pot or pan of you know, grease. Uh, it's, a lot e it's a lot easier to cook them without uh, burning yourself. Oh, that's a good point. And you're not using oil, so they're you know, lower in fat than if you deep fried them, right? So it's good for your health. Exactly. Yeah. I wish we could taste them. It looks so good. And I wanted to ask you, do you have any other tips for us as far as the air fryer or anything about cooking that you'd like to share with our audience today, our virtual audience, because they may have questions as well. Um, yes. Would you mind repeating the first part of your question? I just couldn't hear it there with okay. the Right. Basically, I want to know if you have any other tips as far as the air fryer or anything about cooking as a visually impaired person with retinitis pigmentosa, oh, yeah. anything that can help other chefs out there. Um, yeah, I think one of my major tips is to just get in the kitchen and start trying. Don't be scared to try anything. You know, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't turn out, you can always order takeout. Right. Um, one of my these are my my oven mitts that I swear by in the kitchen. 
Um, I'm not sure the rest of the chefs on today's episode use them or not. Um, would that be another tip of mine is to make sure you have good, uh, good things to protect your hands. And uh, yeah. other than that, just don't be scared to try a new recipe. Even if you think it's out of your comfort zone. Yes, that's so important just to get in there. Maybe get your chi- kitchen, your chicken, listen to me. Get your chicken set up. No, get your kitchen set up maybe by the Division of Blind Services or the Lighthouse. I don't know what you have up there in Canada, but they'll put little dots on certain parts of your stove. Did you have anything like that done to your kitchen? Did you set it up especially for you? Um, Yeah, I have dots on my my oven uh, because we have like a push button type stove. And also on my microwave, I have dots. And I don't, you probably can't see it, but there's a, there's like a piece of tape on the start button on the uh, air fryer. Okay. Um, so you can run everything through your phone. Um, but unfortunately, you still have to press the start button on the machine. So uh, I did need to add a piece of tape to be able to feel where, where to press there. Okay. Well, those are great, great tips. I love that. Now, I was going to ask you something a little different than the cooking. Do you have a, do you use a white cane or do you have a guide dog or how do you get around? Um, I get around with a white cane. Okay. Okay. I have uh, two pet dogs with no guide dog yet. Right. But the two pet dogs give you so much love, right? Exactly. Very much so. And I bet they hang around you when you make your chicken. Yeah, they're always not far, that's for sure. <laughs> they make good vacuum cleaners, let me tell you. That's when for you get, sure. When you drop stuff. All right, well, anything else you want to add? You've been such a pleasure. You made cooking in the kitchen seem very easy and fun, and you have a real passion for it. So we appreciate it, and we wish you the best of luck in anything you do. And right. we want you to come back. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, I'd love to come back. Anytime you need a guest, just reach out. All right, Dave. And I expect those cookies to come to Florida. Okay. Just kidding. I know. You don't have to send me any, but maybe it'll surprise me. All right. You have a great day. Talk to you later. Thank you so much. Bye, Dave. Okay. Well, that was really fun. We loved having Dave on. And he's still, I still see him on the screen. I'm gonna put my trusty glasses on to read this introduction because it's very thorough and I wanna make sure that I give our next guest, Leah and her husband, Pastor Kevin Kareem, the proper introduction. So if you listen carefully, I'm gonna read their introduction. Um, We wanna welcome Leah Kareem and her husband, Pastor Kevin Kareem, who has previously, he appeared on our show And Leah Perry has been blind since she was a baby, but there's so much more about her that we need to know. She teaches Braille and runs an organization known as Diverse Opportunities for the Visually Impaired in Toledo, Ohio. While she and her husband, Pastor Kevin Perry, who is also blind, get the blind, they get the blind and partially sighted people out of the house and get them off the couch and get them active. We'll find out what it is like to be a part of a couple that is blind together and find out, this is funny, now I gotta share this. We're gonna find out how Pastor Kevin helped Leah extinguish the flames when her hair caught on fire? Are you kidding me? That should be funny. So we want to welcome today Leah and Kevin Perrine to our show. Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, it's great to have you back. Well, not back, last time we had your husband, now we have you, and you're going to be preparing for us your pumpkin, twice pumpkin, twice, pumpkin, pumpkin pie, but no cans of oil. Tell us how you make this happen. Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I gave you a long long introduction, but there might be a few things we need to know about your blindness. We we would love for you to share and anything else you'd like to share before you prepare your recipe. 
Well, I'm not actually from here. I'm from upstate New York. Upstate and, New York. Okay. Yeah. It's a little town called Waterloo. It's in between Syracuse and Rochester. Oh, I'm from Rochester. Yay! Yeah, we know it gets cold up there. <laughs> Go on, I'm sorry. Okay. It's snow from Canada. When that happened, that's when I came here to be with him, where he lives. So okay. I traveled yeah. to be with him. So you left. Um, and we actually met in Lewis. Okay. You're breaking up just a little. So I apologize if I'm not responding to you in the way I should. But um, so you're from upstate New York. You moved down to Toledo to be with your husband. And um, you love to cook? Yeah, we do love to cook. I love to bake too. More than love to cook. You love to bake. Well, that's what you're going to do today. Why don't you go ahead yes. and show us how you prepare your pumpkin pumpkin. No cans involved at all in this recipe. Okay, well, I'm going to start with the pumpkin. Okay. Um, today, like, I'm going to be making pumpkin pie. And today, right now, I'm just going to start to put together the pie part. Okay. Of the so first... the pumpkin pie mix into the bowl. Here's my pumpkin pie. And it's really thick, so you might have to really work to get it out. You want to make sure that at least the majority of the mix is out into the bowl. You don't have to necessarily get it all out of the pan, but you want the majority out. And it might seem like you're getting it out for a really long time. Speak up, please. Okay, just so I'm just so I'm, I'm still, clear, Leah, excuse me, honey, just so I'm clear and yeah. everybody else is because the phone was going in and out. So you don't use canned pumpkin, you bake the pumpkin in the oven first, or what are you doing? Um, I'm using Libby's pumpkin pie mix. You can get it from Walmart and it's a 14 okay. ounce can. I thought it was no can. I thought there were no cans involved in this pumpkin pie. What's going on here? <laughs> there is. It, 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 oh, has it? Pumpkin, and it can't come in a, in a bowl. Okay. It in a can. All right. That's fine. You can do it either way. I can't get it all out of the can. So anyway, next, um, you put, so that pumpkin pie mix goes in first. first. And then you put in evaporated milk. And this is a 12 ounce can. And with this evaporated milk, pour slowly. Because if you pour quickly, you're going to get it all over the place. <laughs> okay, that's a good tip. Definitely pour it in slowly. I know by experience. Yeah, <laughs> you made that mistake before, right? <laughs> before you do the next ingredient, you stir a little bit because it breaks up the um, pumpkin and it, it makes it so it's more uniform. But stir slowly, because if not, you'll make a mess. So next, you put in your dry ingredients, which means all of your spices. You have three-fourths cup of sugar. We have one and a half teaspoons of salt. We have a teaspoon of cinnamon. We have a half teaspoon of ginger and a fourth teaspoon of cloves. Okay. And 
And to save time, we opened up all of them and pre-mixed them into this little bowl. So all I have to do is dump them in. So I'm dumping them in now. And then you want to stir again, which incorporates what you just put in into the mix. Okay, and then the next ingredient you want is eggs. You want two eggs. And again, I put them into a bowl. So I'm pouring them in now. Again, you mix. I love how you give a description of everything. You keep it very organized and neat. And everybody who's visually impaired and blind could follow what you're doing. So, and then when you mix this, it's going to be more soupy until you bake the pie. It's not going to really form up. So we're just mixing it and feeling for bumps. You don't want any lumps in your pie. Okay, so then you come over here to the right. And this pie crust was freshly made this morning. And it was given to me, the recipe was given to me by my stepdaughter, Amanda. Very nice. She shared it with me over the internet and she told me I could use it. So Pastor and I put it together this morning and baked it. And this is the crust. So what you want to do is you want to put what you just mixed into the crust. Now, I'm totally blind. So, and I don't like to make a mess. So what I do is I picked up a one cup measure and it's in my hand. And what I'm gonna do is scoop out some of the mixture and put it into the pie tin. And I'm gonna do that until it's about halfway to the top. And this way you don't make a mess, which we're all about. But you've done this so many times, right? And you know your kitchen makes it a lot easier. Okay, and then when you think- I don't think she can hear me. Can you hear me? About halfway. No. We can't hear you from here either. You can't hear me? I guess not. No. Yes. And then you pick up the bowl when you I think hear. you've got it halfway and you pour the rest of it in. And the mixture is going to come up to the top of the crust. It just fits perfect. Yeah, it fits perfect to the in that crust. And half the fun is getting your hands really messy, which my hands are really messy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, so once you get it all in, you put it in a 350 degree oven for 55 minutes. Wow. And when, before you put it in, um, put it on a cookie sheet because then you're able to get it out of the oven without touching the pie plate. Amen. That's a good point. So it won't trip down into the stove. Right. And then I have a finished product here. Get the finished product? There you go. 
Wow. That looks good. That That's looks what good. It looks like. That looks wonderful. Can you hold it up a little bit more and tilt it towards the camera? I don't know if she could hear me. Renee, I don't think she could hear me. Okay. Tilt, um, tilt it. Can you tilt it? <laughs> there we go. Very nice. Very good. And we want to take any questions from our virtual audience. If anybody has any questions for Leah, please, now's the time to ask her about any tips about her pumpkin pumpkin pie and anything you'd like to know or comment on. Renee, can you um, ask if there's anybody? Oh, there's somebody there. Uh, let's see, anyone have any questions? No, not me. I have a question. Yes, yes. I have a question. Can you hear me? Hey, Mary. Yes. Hi, Hi there. Hi. Thank you for that wonderful recipe. I'm wondering how do you tell that the pie is totally baked? Because sometimes that 55 minutes may be good or may not. And so is there a way, you know, to tell without burning your fingers or doing something? Well, when you take it out of the oven, you can lightly press on the top of it and then you can find out if it's done because if it's done, it'll be firm. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Leah, what is your favorite pie to make? Is it pumpkin or do you like something else better? I love pumpkin pie. I like to make pumpkin pie. I like apple too, but I like pumpkin a little better because the apple has the top crust on it. And that takes nice. a It smells good and I can't even smell it. <laughs> you should be here. <laughs> the I'm across the street from you. <laughs> That's funny. We'll save you a piece. That's funny. Well, I have a question, Renee. I don't know if she could hear me, but if you could hear me, you could relate it to her. We can hear you. We can hear you fine. Okay, oh, good, good. My first question has to do with the spices. If you don't have all those spices that you mentioned, can you use either allspice or pumpkin spice? Would that work? That's question one and two is, do you have to butter the outside of the crust, the top part before you put it in the oven or you didn't seem to have to do that? So that's a good, easy step. Can use allspice, yes. And um, if I wasn't coming here, I would use allspice in my regular recipe when I was making it at home. But because I'm here, I put the spices in. Um, and no, you do not have to butter the crust. OK, good. Makes it easy. OK, thank you. And I guess, as promised, we wanted to have a pastor, Perrine, along with Leah. And we wanted to find out how uh, he put her hair out. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, a little you. bit of what their organization is doing. <laughs> Um, another, another tip that I have is to prevent it from burning, you put aluminum foil around the edge and that helps it from burning. Okay, good. That's a good tip. We want to hear from Pastor Kevin Perrine. How are you, sir? Fine. How are you doing? Very good. We want yeah. you to tell us a story about her and how you helped her hair from not burning or tell us that story. Well, when she first moved to Toledo, she was unfamiliar with the stove that we were using. It was a gas stove. And um, she decided she was gonna help with supper. So she started it, but she forgot. Right now she has her hair up, but normally it's down her back. So um, she didn't put it up accidentally and she turned the gas stove on and it caught fire and I had to come in and uh, put a towel over her head, get it out and then put water on it. Um, uh -huh. And it, it was just, a, it was sort of one of those things that happened to some of us who are visually impaired. Um, yes. We forget to do something and an accident happens. 
Yes, and you were right there at the right time. So <laughs> thank God right. you were home. Right. Yeah, you don't have that problem though, do you, with your hair? No, 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 I don't have that problem with my hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good tip, definitely to tie your hair up. I've, I've come close to that as well. So it's, it's kind of scary. You can maybe laugh at it now, but when it was happening, it was very scary, I'm sure. That's correct. It was scary at the time. And we've yeah. had other things in the kitchen that we've done. Like one of the things that Leah did mention is the spices that we use are all braille labeled so we can read them. Um, so that's one of the other hints. We use our phone a lot for timing. Like when, when Leah put this pumpkin pie in the stove here, I, I went around the corner where no one can hear me and start the timer. That way the people who are volunteering and us can have a piece after it's done. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's so important that the timer is worth its weight in gold. I mean, you need it. Sometimes you set two timers. Sometimes you can put one on your phone and you can have one on the fridge or what have you. The more the merrier, absolutely. How right. about color holders? Do you use any special uh, tools in the kitchen besides the timers? Well, yeah, we use other things like you saw Leah doing the one cup measuring. Those are all braille. Um, and she has a set of uh, measuring spoons like one eighth, one four uh, teaspoons, and those are braille. So right. it's easy to measure for her. We, we have other equipment that we use around the house that are related to our Echo Dot. So um, we use some of that kind of technology. We also, um, if you would have saw the spoon that Leah had, it has a marking on it. So when we go to stir stuff like um, iced tea or Kool-Aid, we know where to take the water up to. Uh, so, there's other hints that we do like that. Other equipment that we use. Right, our, right. Our, our microwave is Braille, so we don't have to worry about that. Did you purchase um, so it that other... way? Did you purchase it in Braille or did you have to add the, the dots to the microwave? Uh, no, we actually had a template that um, you could glue like sticky on it and it marked everything for you. It marked the start button and uh, uh, the timer. And so it was just like a template that you slid on the front and then it was all braille so you could read it. Awesome. And then we got the, so then we got the braille, the manual um, in uh, electronic and in braille. So that way we could easily find what we needed to do and how to do it. Okay. So who made the braille labels for the spices? Do you have a brown? We work together. We I'm sorry? Together to, um, we, we worked together. He read me what the spices were and I brailed them. See, like, like an example is this has a label on the front and it has braille on it. So that way we can always find what we need. That's fantastic. I love how you guys work together and help each other and, um, it sounds kind of romantic, actually, <laughs> but you, you two are amazing. Um, I'd like to know any other things you can share with us or about your blindness and your organization, what you do to help other people as well? Well, likely, uh, I've had my condition since birth. Um, it's a very rare condition, and so I've had to live with it, likely, uh, all her life. I've had to live with my condition. What the organization is doing um, with the help of volunteers that are here today, plus other volunteers who weren't present with help, uh, we're doing things like we're creating sort of the same idea, but for daily living skills for like, um, like Renee has done with cooking, but it's daily living skills. So we're working um, on a YouTube channel for those kinds of projects for people to show off how they knit when they're blind, um, how they do other things, um, other electronic equipment they use, cell phones, things like that. So that's coming up next year. We have a lot of activities that we have scheduled for December 
that we're taking people to some of the local attractions and some of the attractions that are in Michigan, such as the world's largest Christmas store that's in Michigan. Ooh. Um, so we do things like that. Um, all of our services are free. Leah actually works in the office as a receptionist and as an assistant. Plus, she owns her own business, small business. What so we help business? people like in that way by helping them get started. Right. Well, wow. her business is a Braille translation business where if you have print material, um, right. let's say a children's book, if you have print material, um, you can send it to Leah and she will put that into Braille for the reader who might read Braille. I've done cookbooks, Kel. We've done yes. cookbooks. Uh, she's done business, business cards. She, does, uh, she can do labels like this for your house. So it's wow. all sorts of anything that translated. That is amazing. Wow, I love that because we had a, we were talking to a gentleman back when we were filming um, back in Fort Lauderdale. It was a few years back, but he says that Braille has become more of a lost art, so to speak. Not a lot of visually impaired blind people are using Braille, but I think it sounds like there's a lot of need for it. Those of us who, love, who, who use Braille, Braille, and we don't want to, they have to do it. those of us Braille readers who have read Braille for a while, we don't want to change. So I know Braille fluently, and I do a lot of it, and I love it. Okay. Well, that, that sounds wonderful. I wish I wish we could speak with you more. You're doing such great things. I like the fact that you're taking people out on a field trip to the largest Christmas store and making people happy and be able to get out of the house, get off the couch, start doing things. You're a real inspiration to the blind. So we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for your recipe. Thanks for sharing your passions. Thanks for sharing a bit about your life. And um, we hope to see you on the show again, okay? Thank you. Hope to see you again too. Okay, you have a great Thanksgiving and uh, happy holidays. You as well. Thank you. Thank you. Renee, I think we're gonna move on to the third segment. Um, last but not least, and you can help me out with this because I'm realizing that our next guest is blind and deaf, or she visually impaired and deaf. But her name is Rose Kama Morrison, and we want to welcome her to the show. Um, both you and her husband, um, let's see here. Oh, you guys met at a race because um, Rose loves to run, and that's fantastic. The only time I'm going to run is someone's chasing me. So I admire that you're into exercise. You love to run. You and Dave should plan something, get together on that. But that's how you met your husband. And we want to know how you prepare your no-bake dessert balls. Renee, Hi. how do you do this? She can't hear me, so what's up? I can hear you just fine. Uh, I, I'm not totally deaf, just okay. partially. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, I apologize. I apologize. It says that you were deaf. So I'm glad you can hear me. Thank you so much. Do you have hearing aids in, in today? I do. Yeah. That's fantastic because you, you sound you sound wonderful. Tell me if I'm too loud or not loud enough. I appreciate that. You're just uh, perfect. Okay. I appreciate you uh, for being on our show. And um, I'm excited. I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Tell us about your visual impairment. Tell us um, how you got into the sport of running. So tell us first about your visual impairment and your hearing impairment. Thanks for having me here, Annette. Um, what I have is retinitis pigmentosa. I was actually born um, uncommunicative and uh, it wasn't until I was about uh, three years old that they discovered something wasn't right. 
And back in the 60s, oh my God, I'm telling my age already. Um, back in the 60s, um, they were gonna institutionalize me and uh, cause that's what they did back then. And, uh, but my parents wasn't gonna have that. So going from specialist to specialist, they finally found what was the problem. And that was just hearing loss. I have a severe hearing loss. So with uh, being age three, I was put into a special school to, um, with extensive speech therapy and learning how to hear with, uh, they weren't, they were like hearing aids, but they were like voice boxes on my chest. So I'm, I'm so thankful for technology because I would hate to wear those today. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so I rely on hearing aids and uh, it wasn't until I was 16 that I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosis. And uh, that was a crucial age to be diagnosed because, you know, you learn to drive and, you know, do all kinds of things. Yeah, but, like you didn't have anything else going on in your life and you had to have that go on. Yeah, and, uh, but, you know, it, it just went over my head during my teenage years. It wasn't until I was in my 30s and when I realized the changes in my vision and uh, now I went from normal sighted to about five degrees vision. So it's kind of opposite of what you have. I, I lose all my peripheral vision. Right. Yeah. It's just so, the opposite of the macular, right. I don't let that stop me from living life, that's for sure. I've got, done a lot, seen a lot. Um, I started running in my early 40s, and that's where I met my husband. Um, we uh, wanted to, we qualified for the Boston Marathon. So um, in a group of us runners that qualified, we're busily happy, you know, talking about plans going to Boston. And, and I was very quiet. So my, my uh, husband said to me, well, how come you're not planning and you know, you're not saying much. And I said, well, I am visually impaired, I'm blind. I cannot run in a crowd of 65,000 other runners. That's just an, an impossible task. Well, he said, don't worry. I used to be a, a sighted guide back in the UK. I can guide you. So oh, he sweet. gave, yeah, he gave up his time to, to be my eyes, which is amazing. So we had an incredible experience. It was my slowest run ever, but that didn't matter. It was the it experience. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that is so sweet. And it's like it was meant to be. He was, he was God sent to you. Come on, how many people would be that selfless to do yeah. something like that? He had his eye on you though. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't long after that, I fell in love with him, so. <laughs> oh, how could you not, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's so impressive. Like, I've always wanted to, to ride bikes, like the race bikes and be in the group because I used to do that in college. But I'm scared to death to get on a bike now because, you know, obviously it's hard to see. All the bikes are close together. Um, at least with the running and you have somebody there that can help you and you're not on a bike. I think it's a little safer. Well, I have done triathlons as well. Um, we have right. bikes for that. And oh, uh, yeah, awesome. and it's awesome. It's an awesome experience. Um, tandem bike for the biking and swimming. My guide and I would be tied together at the legs and um, running. We just sort of have a tether, hand to hand tether. And that's how we did it. That's awesome. But how did you find the person to help you with the bike and the person to help you in the water? Was that something you have to hire or was that your husband? Who was that? Uh, no, uh, we asked for volunteers. Uh, there's, my husband uh, started up a Facebook page on getting guides for athletes. And that's how we did it. We did it through uh, friends, uh, volunteers on the uh, Facebook page and stuff. So it's all volunteer. See, that's awesome. That's when social media definitely is a positive thing. That people would do that. I never knew that there would be people that would do that. So you're inspiring me to maybe get out there on a bike again. So I appreciate that. I really appreciate you being here. And I'm so excited to hear about your no-bake dessert balls. Do you want to share that recipe with us now? I certainly will. Okay. Uh, 
These are called Nanaimo bar balls. Uh, it is actually a, re a regional dessert. Um, it's actually invented just about an hour away from where I live. So I thought I'd do something regional for this Thanksgiving special. So now where is that exactly that you live? Uh, I live on Vancouver Island in a town called Port Alberni. And okay. the Nanaimo Bars is about an hour away from where I live. So that's where it was invented in, in somewhere 1856 or something like that. Way back. Way okay. back. Before my time. I'm not that old. Um, so <laughs> these balls are um, actually, they're originally are squares made of three layers. A crumb, uh, like a nut crumb layer, a custard layer, and a chocolate layer on top. It's, it's ever so decadent. It has no calories on on holidays. So, but when no, it's, we're not going to think about the calories. Calories. <laughs> um, but okay. So what what you do with this is you get your base. I use these really. Um, colorful bowls as my prep bowl so I can see them against my white counter and I mix all my dry ingredients the base layer with a cup of graham crackers um, a cup of unsweetened shredded coconut a half a cup of finely chopped nuts my choice is pecans in this one you can use walnuts or almond and um, two tablespoons of cocoa powder you mix it all in and it will be like a real crumbly, coarse-like mix. I'm not sure if you can see it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, I can so see it. what it looks like. That's your base layer. Okay. And then you go into another bowl and then you make your custard layer. So aren't I speedy? Okay, now um, this this custard is actually um, icing sugar, which has oh two cups of powdered icing sugar, a quarter cup of uh, melted butter, and two tablespoons of whipping cream, and some instant vanilla pudding. Um, the recipe calls for two tablespoons of the vanilla pudding. I use a uh, vanilla paste because it's a bit more intense in flavor and I like that real vanilla flavor. So you mix all your ingredients in and it becomes like a really thick, like dough. Yes, it's like a custard. It's like a, it's like a very firm mashed potato texture. Yeah. So you roll each into a small ball um, I would say about three quarter of an inch ball. Okay. So that's there. Be something fun for kids to do. Yeah, it would be. It's a bit messy. It can be. So I get the crumble mix. And then I, with the uh, crumble mix, maybe I'll put it over here. I don't know if you've got you can see the window there. No, okay. Um, because it's kind of messy to tip over, but you just sort of firmly press with your hands to get the crumb mix surrounded your ball. Um, I like this is my favorite part of the ball is the crumb mix. Right. It's fun. It's decadent. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um, this is a really good thing to bring to a, a Christmas party or um, I bake a lot to give away to businesses in town here just to cheer them up, you know, kind of thing. That's and, nice of you. Definitely sweet. Yeah. So now it is. It takes a little bit of work. So now it's like it's coated with the uh, nut crumb mix. And then the fun part is dipping it in chocolate. Mm. 
So I'm going to make another one because I think this is a bit too soft. Because really, once you, yeah, they are a bit too soft. Once you um, do all your balls and the crumb mix, you put them in the fridge or in the freezer for about a half an hour because the, the more firm it is, the easier it is to dip in chocolate. Yeah. Otherwise, it just falls apart and uh, you lose them into your hot uh, cocoa. So that would be easier to handle, put them in the freezer, you're right. So how does that chocolate, was that already put in a double broiler or how did, did you melt it or what, what's going on with that? Or is it first already soft? With the chocolate layer, you uh, get about eight ounces of chocolate, like baker's chocolate. Uh, I use semi-sweet. I don't use milk chocolate because otherwise it's just too, too sweet. And then you just uh, put a bit of butter in there. I would say, oh, half a cup of butter and you temper it because it's really important that you don't burn your chocolate. Otherwise they get all like grisly, kind of a broken down chocolate. So what I have is a double boiler or a Bain Marie, whatever we call it here. And you temper your chocolate. And it should be a real nice glossy kind of a finish. Okay, there we go. So it's nice, it's rich looking, it's glossy, then, then it's time for dipping. So once that is ready for dipping, it's just the last 10 minutes or you so. can get your ball, pick a toothpick in it. See, here's what you have to say. It is, um... The thing was, there was a train coming in the station, and God forbid it should it hit her, and she managed to stop the train when he was up three or four cars into the station, so thank God she wasn't hurt. Our hearts go out to this point. You know, nobody, no rider, no New Yorker should have to hear this kind of thing happen. Of course, as I said, this happens just as... And so while you're dipping your chocolate, you give it a gentle twirl until it's uh, covered completely. You keep twirling it and let the chocolate drip off into the pan. And then um, once it's uh, stopped dripping, you, keep, you just keep twirling and it gives it a much more even coating to it. There we go. Sorry, and, uh, but listening, huh? listening to this is making my mouth water because I could picture the way you describe it, glossy and covering the whole ball there that it's, I could picture it in my mind. It's making my mouth water with the chocolate. Uh, there you go. They're all done. Mm, that looks great. Yeah. I like so to put it in the white bowl. It's perfect because you can really see yeah, the context. Actually see them, yeah. I've even decorated some of them with a white chocolate on nice. top. Now, and that, please, can you all, oh, go ahead. Sorry. And that's all to it. That's it. That's all to it. All you do. That's easy. I mean, it's, it's it could be a little messy, but that's part of the fun. Yeah. That, I was wondering, could you put a could you stick a put a stick in there, like a popsicle stick or something? Oh, I guess um, there was they an video, so. I can do it again if you like. No, I, no, I, I'm earlier. sorry. I didn't understand. I was asking, can you put a stick in the bowl? I, I did. I just did it a few minutes ago. Oh, you, you want did? me to do it again? Oh. oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. I didn't even see that part. So you put a oh, stick in there? There was an interruption of somebody else. Right, um, right. Okay. On the phone or something. So I can do it again if you like. No, just describe what you did. You put a stick, do they have to go in the freezer? Yes, the balls have to go in the freezer to firm up. Then you stick, you stick the uh, toothpick into the ball. Like that. Put your crumb on, put them all in the freezer. And then you, Bring it to your pan, but the chocolate's now melted, nice and glossy. And then when you dip it in, you use a spoon 
and twirl it while you're um, covering the chocolate over the ball. And then you keep twirling it, let it drip the excess chocolate back into the pan so you get a nice even coat. And then once that's done, you put it back in the fridge to let it firm up. Okay, so what I'm trying to make clear here, so the purpose of the toothpick is to twirl it in the chocolate. You're not gonna actually hold the toothpick and eat it. I was thinking of a popsicle stick where you can hold, yeah. Yeah. hold no. it and eat it. It's just to make it easier to work with. Okay, that, that clarifies it. Thank you so much. I missed that part totally. Like you said, there was some nope. internet interruption there. But um, that looks like something that I would love to try. In fact, I almost started to write down the recipe, but I realized that with this recipe and all our other recipes, the, the wings and the, the pumpkin pie, that if you want these recipes and are cooking without looking, everybody just needs to go to the website of cooking without looking. That's, and now you've heard it before, but I'm gonna repeat it. It's www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. That is cooking without looking tv.wordpress.com. You can get Rose's uh, and Dave and Leah's recipe all there at our website. But I want to thank you so much, Rose, for being with us today. You're such a pleasure. Keep up the good work, work and keep running, even if someone's not chasing you, just keep running and uh, come back and see us again. Certainly will. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Same here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a couple tips here. Um, if you'd like to sponsor our show, I would love for you to sponsor our show. We really would, could use the help. We could keep the show going. We know that you love it. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. We want you to sponsor. Please go to your phone, your cell phone, and dial 305-200-9104. 305-200-9104. Ninety-one zero four, and you can sponsor a show, or you can directly donate to Vision World Foundation by going to the website again and clicking at the top where it says donate, and you can help out the cooking without looking show. This is a well needed and well liked show. Uh, we also have a podcast that you can listen to anywhere you can get your podcast. Just put cooking without looking, and you'll be amazed at the people that are interviewed on the show. It's so inspiring to hear what everybody is doing out there and how they became visually impaired or blind, what they're doing now in their lives. And um, they'll really, really make you smile when you listen to that. Maybe make you cry as well, but at the end, you're gonna be like, I'm so glad I listened to this. But I just wanna thank everybody here for joining us today, taking time out of your busy schedules to make a recipe for all our chefs out there. Thanks again. And everybody for watching out there in the virtual world. If anybody has any final comments or questions, please shoot them now. If not, I wanted to wish you all a very happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. And remember to have gratitude every day and to be thankful. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thank you.